This is part three of our Exploring Absolute Value lesson series. And in the first part, we just introduced this very basic absolute value graph and noticed uh, that it has this V shape and it has this interesting point called the vertex. And in part two, we, we kind of generalized the idea of, of adding a number, whether it's positive or negative, to this original graph. And, and that caused uh, the, the graph to shift up or to shift down. And uh, that is every single point on the blue graph is in this case, as it, as it is now, is shifted down by two units. Because really what we did was we, we took a value of x, we plugged it into this equation to get the value of y, and then we modified that y value. And when we modify the y value, it, it causes uh, movement in the y direction in kind of an intuitive way. If, if it moves up or if I add a positive number, it's going to move up. And if I add a negative number or if I subtract another a num number, in other words, it moves down. And um, we're going to pick up this idea. I'm going to turn that blue graph off for a second. And I'm going to, instead of calculating the absolute value of a number and then changing the result, I'm going to modify the number that I before I take the absolute value. And that's what it looks like here in this equation. Uh, and then the green graph is what results. This one is a little uh, counterintuitive, I think. Notice I took my value of x and I added four units and then I took the absolute value. But that, that seemed to have caused a shift, not in the positive direction because I added four, but instead it shifts in the negative direction. Uh, so my vertex moved here from uh, an x value of zero down here to an x value of negative four. And I just want to explore uh, this pattern, uh, this counterintuitive pattern by, uh, by just following the, the path of, of one point. Like maybe, again, I have this example where if x is equal to three, right, um, what the equation tells me to do is it says, uh, well, first, go from x equal to 3, add 4 to it to get 7. So here I am at 3, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4. That brings me to 7. I take the absolute value of that number. It brings me all the way up here to positive 7. Um, and then uh, the absolute value of 7 is equal to 7. But when I graph that point for my new graph, I have to go back to the x value equal to 3. And so, so my x value is 3 and my output, my y value is 7. And look, I ended up with this point right here. And it's that act of, of basically starting here at x equal to 3, having to go up in this direction to add 4, and then go find my absolute value, but then having to go back go back to where the x is equal to 3 to plot that value. That's what causes this, this shift in the negative direction when I add 4. And, and again, you'll notice, and maybe you, can, you could guess that, like if I wanted to say subtract 2 instead, right? That actually caused a shift in the horizontal direction in the positive horizontal direction. And again, let's take the example where x equals 3. Well, when I take the absolute value, or what I, I don't take the absolute value first. In fact, what I do is I take that 3, that x equal to 3. I subtract 2, brings me down here to 1. Take the absolute value of that, I get 1. But then I'm going to plot that y value that I got, 1, back here where x equals to 3. And, and it's right here on my, on my green graph. So, so... This parameter here, and I'm going to generalize it just like I did in the last time. I'm going to call it H and add the slider. When I subtract a positive number, it's going to cause movement in the positive horizontal direction. And when I subtract a negative number or, or add a number, it's going to cause a, a horizontal translation in the negative x direction. So it's a little bit tricky 
uh, because there's some 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 something happening with the signs that we have to kind of think deeply about. Um, and uh, I can actually put these two ideas together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add k on the end of my graph, and I'll just uh, I'll just drag this up here. So I have my k and my h, and notice. When I write this equation, y equals the absolute value of x minus h plus k, then my k value causes a vertical translation. Let's say, uh, I'll just say like two units. And h causes a horizontal translation, but notice when I subtract two, it causes a translation in the positive x direction, or if I subtract even three, okay. And so <coughs> there's a little something happening counterintuitively in the horizontal direction, but I'm going to leave the, leave h and k as they are here, and just want to point out one thing. If you look at the original equation, if h and k are zero, then I I, I I get back to this original blue equation, uh, this, this equation here that's graphed in blue. And so the H and the K, when I write my equation like this, I actually um, can pick out the coordinates of that vertex right out of my equation. Look, H is 3 and K is 2. And those are the coordinates of my vertex. So one of the things that we want to be able to do uh, when we look at an, uh, an absolute value equation is to be able to show exactly, uh, to be able to pick out exactly where the vertex is. So if I had something like, like this, this equation in, uh, that I've graphed here in black, notice that, uh, well, K is easy, that's negative two. Uh, H is a little tricky because I'm adding one my value for h is actually negative 1. So the, the coordinates of that vertex are x equal to negative 1, y equal to negative 2. So you can now you can look at the equation in this form and just pick out the vertex. And again, if you forget these rules, and I, I give you an equation like this, and I said, hey, where's the vertex of this thing? Remember, you can always just make a table of, X and Y values, and and uh, and make your own graph, and and just kind of figure out where does this thing stop and start turning around, and uh, and that's another way. If you if you don't remember any of these rules, you can always construct a graph. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's there's always a way uh, uh, to to move forward.